Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. I am with Ashish, the chief engineer for a brand new engine for Stellantis. So thank you for joining me today. Really appreciate it. My that. pleasure. But, uh, you know, it was just the other day that uh, Jeep gets to announce a brand new E-Rev for the Grand Wagoneer. I almost said Grand Cherokee because we actually have a brand new clean sheet engine for the Grand Cherokee. So, I mean, it's got to be awesome for you to be working on this. It's it been awesome, yes. So thanks for having me here. And we can, we can start first with the engine assembly, highlighting what we did here. So as you stated just now, it's a brand new engine development for us. There, when we started working on this program, really the key thing was, if you look at our competitive landscape, it has evolved a lot in the last few years. The current two liter turbo, we started working on that back in 2013, 2014. In the last 10, 12 years, there's new technologies out there. Our competitors have made some big leaps on performance, fuel economy. So it was time for us to make sure that when we come out, it's not just another two liter turbo. It has to be best in the market. When we started working with our Jeep brand, there were clear requests for what their customer want. And what we generally see, if you look at the market, either you get more performance or you get better fuel economy. We said, we want to do both. We want to find the right sweet spot for this engine, which can make our customers super happy, where they don't have to make any compromises, no excuses. We did a lot of benchmarking on different technologies out there. We looked at everything internally, looking at all our global engine portfolio on what we are really good at. So we started looking at technologies that we have done like on V6 Maserati, Netuno engine, where we launched first mainstream application of turbulent jet ignition. It's a lower volume program. We looked internally on what we have done, low pressure EGRs, you know, different combustion mechanisms, and comparative threats like variable compression ratio. And then we've tried to come up with the best way to figure out what we will do on this engine. And looking at different mechanisms, efficiencies, performance, integration cost, and complexity, we narrowed it down to turbulent jet ignition. So Maserati started it on a, call it production vehicle program. We are taking it mainstream now. So it's gonna be high volume, taking motor sport technology to every, every Jeep customer, they can get one. Turbulent jet ignition, it's a passive pre-chamber technology where you have... Yeah, let's go over to the, the table because you, you've got a display right here that would be awesome to show the people. So this is what Maserati started with pre-chamber. Uh, it's a passive design where you don't have a fuel injector. You just have a spark plug which sits right inside the pre-chamber. And this is what we ended up with Hurricane 4. So you can see it's a day-night difference. Yeah, between the two, I mean, There's massive two. size difference. The top, where the combustion ha happens, it's almost identical, but how we adapted it, because again, for us, it was important that we account for what Jeep customer does. Jeep customer always also replaces spark plug in their garage. A Maserati customer may not do it, right? So right. all those things on how do we make sure that it is the right adaptation for Jeep customer, for a North America customer, that's what we try to do it here. And again, this is where you're talking about where Maserati is doing this for performance. You're That's trying, right. you want performance and efficiency as well. That's correct. So what pre-chamber does, it sends so much energy into the combustion chamber, which allows us to make our combustion really fast. That enabled us to do other things on this engine, which generally you would not hear synonymous to high performance engines, like higher compression ratio. Most of the time you hear, any other competitor, whenever you hear about their hard perversion, they reduce the right. compression ratio. We said, you know what? We want to make the best fuel efficient engine at higher power density. This technology is allowing us to do it. So we will increase the compression ratio. So now we are running 12 to one compression ratio. Along with that, we wanted to work on our gas exchange efficiency. So we are introducing Miller combustion and that is early intake valve closing. And all it does is, is make sure that you have less pumping and better, uh, con so your expansion ratio is longer now. So you're basically converting more fuel energy into work and less into compressing their fuel mixture. So, so we got with Miller combustion here and I can actually show you. Yeah, if you can show us, cause these pieces are just kind of pressed into the bottom of the head here, right? Yes. Yeah, and so you can see that. And then the, the main spark plug just comes right down through the middle of that. That's correct. So the, what we call the P-chamber spark plug, it sits right behind it. Right. And you have another spark plug right here. That's what we call the main chamber. Think about it. All engines get the main chamber, right? Right. The, the combustion happens. Here we have a pre-chamber. So that's how we disting, uh, distinguish on which plug is what, what coil is what. 
and also to help with overall gas exchange efficiency. We did a lot of work on our intake ports, the size of the valve, because we are pumping so much air, we had to make sure it's the least resistance path. So, and, and that's not the only dual thing I'll say on this. So no. you, you got dual spark plugs, but you also have a dual fueling system, which is Correct. very, very interesting for this as well. So we, since we're talking about different efficiencies here, another key thing we talked about combustion phasing for TGI. Mm -hmm. We also wanted to work on our combustion efficiency. So DI does phenomenal job to making sure that you have best atomization possible in the combustion chamber. It helps with knock, but DI injectors or high pressure direct injection also has a disadvantage of wall wetting, which results in higher soot emissions. Soot emissions requirements are getting stringent in from EPA, from carb side. That's where PFI comes in. So we have a strategy where we are always blending PFI and DI to make sure you get all the pluses of direct injection, but then all the negatives are, you know, basically PFI is filling those of that gap there. So we get phenomenal reduction in soot emissions without penalizing the performance of fuel economy aspect at all. And then since we had PFI, we are also using it for idle operation. So generally when you approach a turbocharged DI vehicle, you always hear the ticking noise. Yeah, that's the DI, you know, the tap aids and the injector. And now we turn off DI completely during engine idle. So you, you, you really don't hear any fuel system noise. So engine is super quiet. And then I know there are always folks out there who worry about direct injections as intake valve coking risk. On our engines, we have never seen it before, but here you go now with the port fuel, you're gonna keep cleaning those intake valves too. Right. So if you were worried, that's not a concern anymore. Well, I mean, I, that's very impressive. You're controlling two spark plugs, you're controlling two, two fuel systems. Injectors. I mean, the, the electronic system has gotta be very robust very for this. Yes, for this engine. I mean, this engine had when we what we call our DOE that we run for calibration, that has the largest DOE we've ever done. So there's so many degrees of freedom on this engine that you can do, you know, different spark timing, different injection timing, different even VGT side. You can do wastegate, VGT, uh, Miller cycle, E phaser, electric water pump. So a lot of actuators. But again, the intention wasn't just to pack up a lot of technology without knowing what you want to do. So every technology has a clear motive, motive here, clear objective, and that's why we, we saw those phenomenal performance numbers without any degradation on fuel consumption. Best emissions that we've seen on any internal engines here and phenomenal NVH here. Yeah, I mean, really the thing that I'm trying to drive home with this video is that it wasn't all that long ago that everybody thought electrification, electrification, yes. electrification. It's just, surprising and kind of amazing to me to see all the tech that's going into you know old dumb ICE <laughs> it, it, it's 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 just surprising to see you know no, I 100% agree and then you know the, the narrative in past few years was everyone was talking about their electrification right new powers coming out electrification and we as as you can see now our CEO has made it public that we want to give options to the customer and there's a lot of customers out there who still like good old ICE engines. And we wanted to make sure that we don't do another good old ICE engine. We want to do the best 2 liter turbo out there. Because if you wanted to develop something all new, we didn't want to be already a dinosaur by the time we come out. Right. And to make sure that we are protected for next 10, 15 years, that this version and then maybe some future refinement, it can stay competitive in the marketplace. Yeah, I mean, even to drive the point home, we had someone that's involved in engine making, you know, components and stuff like that. And he said five years ago, he's like, I would have bet you that no automaker would do a clean sheet engine design. And he said, today, my shops are completely humble. So, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's cool to see and just how, you know, smart how much tech is going into the, the engines now. Yes, and then it's, you know, a lot of ECU or ECM processing and this is where the control software that Mickey was talking about, it's, those are, that's where all the complexity is because you can add the right technology. It all comes down to how you end up using it. And this is where, you know, we work very closely with our software Cal team to make sure that we squeeze every single joules of energy from every drop of fuel that goes into this engine. And, you know, one of the key disadvantage, you know, I briefly talked about it earlier too, that small downsized turbo engines, they do a great job for normal driving around. Everyone gets happy, hey, I got two, three miles per gallon improvement. But if you are a little bit heavier foot driver, and like, 
I'm getting worse fuel economy than my old natural gas bed engine now because those downsize engines are more knock limited. And that's another place where this turbulent jet ignition technology does phenomenal. I mean, when we look at our engine map, it keeps getting better and better and better at higher loads that our fuel map, which is, you know, again, the uh, BSFC is so flat that during normal driving, you get phenomenal improvement, and then you go higher loads like towing, you still get really good fuel consumption because it loves more energy gets in, more energy puts in the combustion chamber. Well, the good part for you is that uh, the plants are now building saleable units, and it won't be long before we see this in the new uh, Grand Cherokee. Yes, we are all very excited to get take it home finally, yes. So cool. Ashish, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. You're welcome.